What's going on everybody? Today we're going to talk about a software development concept that really only sinks in once you have uh, experience and, and there's not really an official name for it but I call it the 90-90 rule. Now again this will usually only bite you in the ass as a new developer when you're building your first app or your first product and that is the concept that there's the first 90% of the app and then there's the second 90% of the app. And you're thinking wait a minute 180% what are you talking about like what the hell does that mean? We'll talk about it. So here's typically what happens when you're building your, your first app, first website, first software development product. Uh, you're gonna build that core functionality first. So when you have all that done, the app is gonna feel like it's 90% done. You're gonna be able to play with it, do all the main functions that you want, and it's gonna be like, wow, this, this app's ready to go almost. Just, you know, it's 90% done. Just got a little bit of polish to go and, and we're done, ship it. But that's where you'd be wrong. You see, that was just the first 90%. And even though it feels almost done, you're really only about halfway done. And that's where the second 90% comes in. And that's all this little stuff where each thing on its own doesn't really seem like that big a deal, but they all add up to a lot of work actually. And that's why when you get to that first 90% point, you're really only halfway done. And the reason I wanna talk about this and bring this up to you newer developers is that it can be very discouraging. I, I remember building my first app it was discouraging as hell. It was frustrating. Like, I, again, I felt like I was almost done. This thing's ready to ship. And then it's just all this little stuff just keeps piling up. And we're gonna talk about that little stuff later. Um, but I wanted to, to share this concept so you know this going into building your first app or if you're already midway through, you can kind of expect this. Uh, Cause what happens is, again, once you get that first 90% done, you think you're done or close to being done. And then you just get smacked in the face by the second 90%. So I'm trying to forewarn you and let you know that second 90% is coming. So let's talk about that second 90% that's about to smack you in the face. And we'll talk about some of the things uh, that it can typically be. Now, if you're here watching this and you're not an iOS developer, that's what my channel focuses on is Swift and iOS development. So these examples are gonna be from that perspective, but you can apply it you know, to your own process. But uh, let's talk about edge cases here. Now this can be, you know, anything from how does your app perform when there's, you know, no internet or, or very, very poor internet connection, right? You got to handle all of that. Uh, what happens when a user gets a brand new device? Are you relying on storing some stuff in user defaults too much? Or, you know, if they delete the app and reinstall, is your app still going to behave properly? Or things like, you know, what happens when a user kills your app in the middle of a key, you know, function that's going on? Or is your app going to be able to recover from that gracefully? Or is it just going to be in this weird state that's broken, right? So you see, basically what really happens here is you think you know how users are going to use your app, but really once it gets out in the wild and users start, you know, banging on your app, they're going to do things you could never, never even think of. So all these edge cases, you have to try and think of that in advance. And like I said, these small things really add up and do some time consuming, you know, fixes. And those were just some common general edge cases. You know, these edge cases are going to be very specific to your app, but uh, they really add up. Next up, let's talk about some really robust error handling, right? When we're, when we're initially developing our app, how common is it to be like to do handle the errors and you'll do that later, right? Because it's, it's tedious work because you got to handle all the various different error messages and, and fail gracefully like we do in our apps, right? You don't want to just have an abrupt error that's not descriptive. You know, you want to let the user know what's going on so they know what happened with your app and so forth. So building out really robust error handling is tedious and time consuming, but it has to be done. And again, it's one of those things where on its own it may not seem that bad, but when you pile on error handling with edge cases and all the other stuff we're going to talk about, again, you can start to see where this second 90% Again, it adds up. You know, and then you have things like just overall analytics, right? You wanna see how many times users are going to a specific screen or how many times they're doing a specific function. So now you gotta, once the app's done, you gotta, you know, put in your analytics so you can track everything. And then there's accessibility features for people with disabilities. And, and this is often overlooked by many developers, but uh, it's so, so important. I've covered it uh, on Swift News a few times. Just the percentage of people that, you know, use the iPhone that actually use these accessibility features. It's a big deal. And if you're ignoring accessibility, stop you shouldn't and then you got testing your ui on all the many many device sizes here in the ios ecosystem now don't get me wrong if you're using auto layout correctly that's going to handle 80 to 90 percent of the work in my opinion however you know making your app look beautiful on the iphone xs max yes i said xs uh and then down to the iphone se size like that's a massive difference and like i said a lot of times auto layout will do most of the work but uh, most of the time you got to tweak that final 10% to get it really looking perfect on, on both screens. And uh, like I said in the beginning, when you're building the original functionality of your app going through the first time, you're not worried about making it look great on all screen sizes while you're still building it and trying to get it to work, right? You kind of save that for the end once you're ready for the polish. But again, now we're just piling more stuff up onto that second 90% that we're talking about. 
And then there's the good old refactoring. How many times have you built a feature, you know, to do refactor this later when you have more time, right? Because oftentimes in software development, you, you just hack it together to get it working and then you clean it up later. Uh, well, sometimes depending on any deadlines, you might not get to that cleanup, which don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating that, that's bad. Always try to refactor and make your code, you know, good before, you know, moving on to the next thing. But I know shit happens and sometimes you don't have the chance to do that. But eventually you gotta pay the piper. And again, during the second 90% is usually when you clean up a lot of technical debt and uh, do, do a lot of refactoring. And then there's testing, you know, depending on your philosophy, if you're doing test-driven development, then you're doing the test first. So this won't be in the second 90%. But most people don't do test-driven development. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying the majority of developers don't do that. So uh, now your unit tests come in after you've built the app. So again, more stuff in the, in the second 90%. So those were just some examples of what can be in that second 90% that just comes in and smack you in the face. Uh, but I wanted to share this because the main takeaway I want you to take away from this video is know that second 90% is coming and don't be blindsided by it and, and don't get discouraged. I want, if you're building your very first app or if you're a junior developer, I want to get you in the right mindset to expect a whole lot of work to still be needed to be done when you think you're almost done. Again, there's the first 90% and the second 90%. So that's what I got for you today. Uh, if you like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing. I put out Swift news every Monday and then a tutorial or two throughout the week. We'll see you in the next one.